What's up guys, it's Evan with Free For All. Let's talk about Game of Thrones. Holy crap. Season 7, Episode 2, Stormborn. Alright, first off, if you haven't watched it yet, stop watching immediately. And first off, before anything else in the world, go watch this episode. Uh, but then come right back here. But, spoilers from here on out. 3, 2, 1. Okay, this is my face. Throughout the whole episode. Holy crap, we're finally getting to... Where we've always wanted to be. Um, so let's just kind of break down the whole the whole freaking episode. Um, right, so we start off with Cersei, and she she's in Dragonstone now. She's in her freaking ancestral home, and we saw that at the end of episode one. But uh, here we kind of see her laying out her plans, um, and she has this awesome scene with Varys, who the guy that plays Varys, I don't know his name, but in a show filled with amazing actors, he's like top three the little monologue he goes into about why he should be trusted and how he is going to be loyal to danny is freaking spot on and it's going to get lost because of what happened at the end of the episode which <laughs> we'll free we'll get into um so you've got Tyrion and Varys trying to be smart as they tell danny how to go through because she could easily take her three dragons probably just them, not to mention an entire legion of Unsullied and an army of Dothraki and just lay waste. But they've also got their allies. They, uh, a little bit later on, are meeting with uh, the Greyjoys, the outcast uh, Greyjoys of Theon, Theon and uh, Yara, um, as well as uh, Dorne. I forget the main girl from Dorne's name now, as she was like the overthrower. Um and then the Sand Snakes, which are whatever. We'll talk about them later. Um, and then you've got Elena Tyrell, who is just the best. <laughs> uh, it, there was, with Elena Tyrell, Diane Rigg is wonderful. Um, Tyrion and Varys in the same room. That's like top tier acting on Thrones. Um, so they're laying out, but uh, Danny's doing the cool thing of kind of going through uh, where she doesn't want to be a queen of the ashes. So she's they're laying out all these plans where um, they're actually going to send the Unsullied and Dothraki at Casterly, Lo uh, Casterly Rock. Excuse me, I don't do well with that. Which I'm not sure we've ever seen. Like we've heard about it a lot because the Lannisters are such a big part. But I don't think we've ever seen them. So I'm really excited to see that. Um, and then they're going to have Dorne. Um, and Highgarden, the Tyrells, actually be the ones to lay siege on uh, on uh, the capital. So I'm really interested to see what's going on with that. But Tyrion brings up Jon Snow, and I was just like, it's happening. I think I said it's happening like 30 times throughout this episode. Because everything, this is based on A Song of Ice and Fire. And I've read the books. They're never going to finish because George R. R. Martin doesn't want to. It seems, but uh, so we're past where that we are in the book. So everything's new to me too. Um, but a song, of ice and fire, kind of seems like the whole thing is going to boil down to Danny and Jon Snow. He's the ice, she's the fire. Um, so, and we have to remember, we learned that the age old theory R plus L equals J is true. He is the son of uh, Lyanna Stark and Rhaegar Targaryen. So he's actually kind of a rightful heir. He's actually Danny's nephew so but neither one of them know that the only person in the world that knows that right now is bran uh who he's on his way as we have kind of a stark uh reunion coming um but she sends him a letter asking him to bend the knee and then we cut to Jon snow um i love Jon snow who doesn't love Jon snow but so he's trying to be king now i don't like what's going on with sansa like i get it but I was like, is it going to boil down to her either making the choice to be with her brother and trust his rule and rule kind of by his side as another Stark? Or is she going to let Littlefinger corrupt her? And Littlefinger is like the sneaky contender for the to win the Game of Thrones, guys. Like, I don't, he doesn't get enough credit. He caused all of this. The whole show opens up after, you know, the after the original scene of the White Walkers opens up with him... Uh, with a shot of John Aaron dead, who was the whole reason Ned Stark came uh, uh, to King's Landing because Tyrion had him, or excuse me, Littlefinger had him killed uh, because he's had this whole he, the whole time he's orchestrated this. We thought it was the Lannisters because they found out about 
because John Aaron found out that uh, Jamie and Cersei were sleeping together and that all the Baratheon kids were actually Lannister incest children. Uh, so it's crazy. He did all that. He's the one that betrayed Ned Stark, which still none of the children know that, and John's going to kill him probably, I'm hoping, because of his creepy vibe with Sansa. But please don't make Sansa side with Littlefinger. It worries me. It truly does. But So John knows he's got to go, and John is headed to freaking Dragonstone to go see Cersei, or to go see uh, Danny. My God. It's... <laughs> Hey, like I said, it's happening. So I, I, I'm crazy excited about that. Um, we see a little, a quick little bit inside of King's Landing with Cersei trying to get uh, Bannerman from the uh, from the Tyrells to switch. The main one of which being uh, Sam's dad, the Tar. Uh, I forget his name, but a uh, Tarly, uh, who is just a douche. But he seems like he's very into honor. He's just a bad dad. Um, who has another son who's evidently Billy Bones from Black Cells. Watch Black Cells if you have it. Um, but uh, it was kind of a throwaway thing, basically just to give Jamie some time on screen, which is never a bad thing. Uh, but then we get to Sam, um, who is has kind of like, he got his important thing last week. I'm kind of interested to see where he goes from here because he found out about that there's a mountain of dragon glass under Dragonstone, which is another reason that John has to go meet Danny. Um, but now he's trying to cure Jorah, who maybe has a part to play in the war to come. I don't know. I mean, he always loves Danny, but we get one of the grossest things that the grayscale kudos makeup team because that stuff is nasty. It's so nasty. Uh, and the scene of Sam peeling off the top layer of his skin, we have seen some nasty stuff in Game of Thrones, guys, but that was. I, maybe it's just me, but watching him dig that scalpel in. It was rough. It was so hard for me. <laughs> but uh, George better man than I am. I would have screamed. Or I would have been like, yo, dude, just punch me as hard as you can and knock me out, please. Although, I don't know if Sam could have. But least, hit him with a bottle or something. It's better than being awake through that. Holy crap. I wouldn't, wouldn't want to do that. Well, let's, let's talk about Arya. Arya, everyone's favorite little mousy girl to start off with, grown into this badass assassin. She's on her way to King's Landing. We found that out in the weird Ed Sheeran uh, drop-in last week uh, to kill Cersei. But she's in an inn, and who does she run into? Freaking Hot Pie. <laughs> uh, who knew Hot Pie was coming back? I didn't, and I don't guess we ever see him again, but he is a survivor, so maybe Hot Pie wins the Game of Thrones. Who knows? Tell me what you think. <laughs> He's got to have odds. Vegas has odds on this, by the way, so it's very interesting. Uh, hot pie, I don't think on there, but can you go go lay ten on hot pie. If you win, it's got to you got to make a fortune on that. Um, but uh, it was it was cool to see him kind of wrap up, you know, or at least you know know that he's still out there, he's still living. But he lets Arya know that Jon Snow's alive. Jon Snow is the king of the North now. Um, he doesn't mention Sansa being there. I don't know if she knows Sansa's alive. I think she does, but I'm not positive. So we have this pivotal moment of her giving up on her quest, and she's finally going home. And she turns towards Winterfell, and I'm freaking just weeping on the inside because I'm so excited. And I'm like, Bran's on his way. Jon is there, even though he's leaving. But Sansa's there. I'm like, all the Starks, they're going to be together. And on the way, I'm like, what's happening in the woods? And in the back of my mind, I let there be hope. I'm like, let this be what I think it is. Lo and behold, it is. It's Nymeria. I bet you guys, most of you guys that haven't read the book have freaking forgot about Nymeria. Her dire wolf that she sets, makes run away in season one because uh, he bit Joffrey, um, which, good boy, uh, or good girl, I guess. Um, and she makes her run away so she won't be killed and be put to death. That's how Sansa's dire wolf uh, lady gets put to death. Um, but Nymeria, if you don't know, and as you saw, has become like king of the freaking, or queen of the wolves. And uh, she backs down and all the wolves don't attack because Nymeria recognizes Arya and Arya's talking. But uh, they never really dived into it much. But all the Stark children, are, and a lot of, I guess, the Starks are uh, wargs which they don't really know they are, and it's if you haven't read the books, we've seen it a little bit. You've seen orcs before in the show, which just means that they 
can put their mind in the body of uh, animals. I think specifically for the Starks, it's like their spirit animal, which is dire wolves. It's like the northern symbol. Uh, it's obviously, it's on their banner. Uh, so it's really cool. Um, so Nameria kind of backs down um, and recognizes her. Um, Arya's like, please come with me. You know, I'm. She can be with her again. She's telling her she's going back to Winterfell, and they can be. A, you know, I'll be family again, and I'll be home. And Maria, uh, kind of just looks at her, uh, not angrily, and just walks away and takes her huge pack of wolves with her. And Arya smiles and says, "That's not you." And she's not saying that's not Maria because obviously it was. Because holy crap, she's a huge tire wolf. She walked in, I was like, "Oh, they're so big." Um, but um, that's all harking back to um, season one when Ned Stark is actually talking to Arya about growing up to be like a proper lady and uh, how she'd be married off one day and um and she says but that's not me um so it's cool to see like Arya's character come full circle and her show that kind of respect to Nymeria who she knows that um uh, Nymeria has kind of made it for herself now she's her own wolf she's become a queen in her own rights and Arya's gonna go do her old thing so I still kind of hope that there's a wolf army that comes to her rescue later because I mean how freaking crazy and badass would that be um and you can't count anything out on the show so um and then finally let's just talk about the end holy shit out of nowhere um we're on a boat with Yara and I think it's Yara in this right because her name's different in this and in the books I never keep it straight but whatever it's her and Theon who Theon's had some kind of redemption so far if he's still just kind of this meek little dude that still hasn't really got what he deserves um I mean he did get his penis chopped off and that's pretty bad <laughs> but uh yeah he still kind of could go through more but um, and then, uh, the head of Dorne, um, I guess she's also, she, I think we've seen before that she's kind of into the ladies, so she's, uh, with his sister, and they're flirting, they're about to get in some stuff, and then, boom, um, out of nowhere, we get, in episode two, we get kind of, a, from season two, Battle of the Blackwater, like a mini version, and holy shit, so... Euron shows up with the rest, and it's Greyjoy versus Greyjoy and some of the uh, Dornish people. Um, but Euron shows up with this gigantic ship. I mean, holy crap, it's huge. And I guess his thousand ships are there behind him. And that's where all the freaking fireballs are coming from. Um, we don't really see a whole lot of the other ships, but we see this massive ship, the huge Kraken flag, um, and it just rams into their ship. Um, drops, I don't know what, it's like a tentacle of the Kraken or something. It slams down the boat. It's a boarding mechanism. It crushes one dude and urine comes flying, Euron, I guess, comes, not urine. Oh, that's close. Anyway, they come flying on and let's do battle. And there's a couple things here. We had to see Euron's value. We've never really seen it. Like, sure, he won the favor of the people in the Iron Islands to be named their king, and it's why uh, uh, Theon and his sister fled and all their people loyal to them. But really all he did was push his brother, a really old man, off of a drawbridge that on a really windy and stormy night, which, let's be honest, I may have just fallen off of that thing. So he didn't do much, and Cersei... He had met with Cersei and was saying that uh, he would prove to her that he was worthy. And he left and, I was, and he said he was going to bring her a gift. And I, All week I was sitting there, I was like, what's he going to He's going to go get Tyrion's head. Maybe he's going to go get Gendry. When I saw like the ships, I was like, if the freaking Greyjoy should come upon a rowboat and Gendry's still out there rowing, I'm going to lose my shit. It's going to be hilarious. But um, in the books, there's also, like I think it's a horn that can control dragons. And uh, which I've never really talked about in the show. I was like, maybe it's that. Maybe they bring that in. Um, but no, he's just going to go after the other Greyjoys. And he comes out of nowhere. And it's 
Euron is a badass, like a total badass. They they did a good job of proving it. He is just going crazy. He's a uh, obviously a good tactician. He surprised the hell out of their fleet. Um, he's just destroying it. Um, and then you have the Sand Snakes down below. The Sand Snakes are the biggest disappointment of the whole Game of Thrones show. If you read the books, they seem so cool. I was so excited for them to come into the show. Um, you saw Oberyn fight uh, when he was killed by the mountain and his fighting style was like super cool and he's flipping around and doing all the stuff. And the Sand Snakes are supposed to be kind of like that. Uh, they're these badass warriors that uh, nobody wants to mess with and they've just never really done anything in the show and they just kind of whine. And I was like, well, their time's coming. No, <laughs> it never came. It turns out you're on greater than Sand Snakes. Um, one stays down to protect, protect the leader lady of the Dorn, and she gets overwhelmed and taken out. We don't see her do much. And then the other two, the one with the two swords and the one with the whip, go up and both fight, fight Euron individually. Why? I don't know. Attack him at the same time, but TV. So uh, they both get annihilated, like bad. And next thing we know, we see one of them with both swords driven through her, and she's like nailed to the mast of his gigantic ship. And uh, the other one is hung from the mast by her whip. They're gone. Sand Snakes kind of sucked in the TV show, but we'll take what we can get. Um, the other one, I don't know if she's dead. I don't know if he, he's got, I don't know if the leader of Dorn's dead, but she kind of drags her off. Um, I'm guessing he's just bringing her back to Cersei, but I don't know for sure. We never saw Stannis dead, die, but he's totally dead. So, I don't know. Uh, but So finally, he's got uh, Yara in a chokehold, and he's just begging Theon to come after him. And I'm like, could this be like a really big redeeming moment for Theon? Like, he saved Sansa. Can he not be a coward? And I'm like, he's going to be a coward. No, he's not. He's not going to do it. He's a total coward. <laughs> he just jumps off the ship. And even his jump was kind of just made him look like a pussy. And I was just like, oh my god, what are you doing? But total Theon. Theon gonna Theon. He jumps off. Who knows? His story's not done yet. I don't know if Yara's dead. I don't. We didn't see her body hanging anywhere. Uh, but I'm guessing he's getting brought back with the other leaders to Cersei. So they probably wouldn't wish they were dead. But who knows? But I mean... Holy shit, <laughs> so much for and for the second episode of a season. Remember, we're only getting seven episodes this year, so it's going to be a lot as we're winding down, because I think next year is only five or six, but they have said that some of these episodes could be like feature length, so we're going to get like two-hour episodes, maybe at some point, at least an hour and a half, uh, probably this year as we build farther towards it. Um, but holy cow, I mean, it's just things are just building and building and things that we've been waiting on for seven seasons, seven years now are finally happening. And, uh, it's so satisfying. <laughs> um, it's the best show on TV. It's the best cinematography. The production value is crazy. Um, and I'm just so happy with where it's going, but I want to know what you guys thought. Did you like this? Uh, sure. I don't know. You all liked it. So tell me how much you liked it. Did you like it as much as me? What are your theories? Where is this going? Uh, who do you think is going to win uh, the Game of Thrones? You know, in the preview for next week, we see John and Danny are finally coming together. Tell me what you think. I really want to know. Uh, make sure to comment down below. Um, and uh, let's all talk. About, you know, I want to know what you guys think. I really do. I want to know uh, uh, where you, how you think this is going to turn out. Um, I, I've got some theories, but uh, I'm going to be back here, uh, try to do this every Sunday uh, for the next five weeks as we finish out this season. Uh, it's going to be more and more crazy. I'm hoping to have some guests on uh, uh, that from our little group that watches the show every week. Uh, but yeah, like I said, tell me down below. Uh, make sure you like this video. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Uh, pretty please. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, if you want to see more Game of Thrones, I'll be trying, like I said, this will be up either the night of or the next day uh, after uh, for the next few weeks. We'll probably do something like this for Westworld uh, in 2018. This is our other show. We, lo we love HBO around here. Uh, but um, uh, if you want to see this, if you want to see more reviews, uh, look out for that. Or if you want to see more stupid stuff from me and the other Free For All guys, uh, make sure you check out the Free For All podcast. And until then, thanks for watching. Thanks, guys.